Welcome to this episode of Inside Brush Country Sports, brought to you by South Texas Orthopedics. I'm your host, Chris Filateo, sports editor for the Pleasanton Express. Can you already believe we are halfway point of the football season? Well, for me, that always signifies district competition is upon us around the brush country. The Eagles clobbered Carrizo Springs 35-6 to remain undefeated at 5-0 last week. Jurdenton shut out Brooks Academy 61-0 in its first district matchup. Poteet trailed 20 to nothing at halftime against Pearsall, but they climbed back into the game after two quick touchdowns. However, the Aggies were crippled by offensive penalties, which resulted in a 41-14 loss. Charlotte earned a victory over Ben Bolt 30-12 and is sitting at 2-3 and at the midway point. In this episode, we will listen to player interviews after last week's games, and we sit down with three of the four coaches to break down their upcoming games. Charlotte head coach Jerry Dominguez was under the weather this week, but rest assured he will definitely be in the saddle this week. First, we interviewed Pleasanton lineman Crockett Mokery, who returned a fumble for a touchdown last week against Carrizo Springs. I'm here with Crockett Mokery, offensive lineman and defensive lineman for the Pleasanton Eagles. What's tonight's win feel like for you? Oh, it's awesome. It's, it feels great to be finally be 5-0, uh, and oh, you know, to finally uh, reach that goal to be 5-0 and oh, so we can keep going on, you know, win homecoming, you know, keep going and get that first district one against Lavernia. What's it like going 50 yards on an interception? <laughs> it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I mean, I, I honestly don't think that's ever going to happen to me again, and it was pure shock, and I, I can't even describe it. I was so happy. How do you think the, the linemen did in, in, in offense and defense did tonight? Uh, I think the defensive line did absolutely great. I think offensive line, we have a few things to correct, you know, picking up linebackers and such. But I think once we get that straightened up, there's nobody that can beat us. Now let's break down the Eagles matchup against Crystal City Friday. Then Pleasanton head coach Tab Dumont sits down with us to discuss Friday's game against the Javelinas. The Eagles host Crystal City for their homecoming game Friday. Pleasanton improved a 5-0 after a 35-6 win over Creaso Springs on the road last week. Pleasanton averaged 9.65 yards per rush while compiling 193 rushing yards in the win. Crystal City is limping in at 1-3 and has lost two games in a row after Zabata beat them 28-15 last week. The Eagles doubled up the Javelinas 40-18 last year. This is Pleasanton's last non-district game before hosting Lavernia next week in its district opener. Here at Pleasanton High School with head coach Tab Dumont. How are you doing today, coach? Doing fine. Great. Well, you know, this week brings a special moment for these kids, especially the seniors, in, in homecoming week. Now, what's uh, Crystal City's offensive formation? Uh, Crystal City, they run out of a two-back uh, pro formation. Uh, they run a lot of uh, toss, power, play-action pass. Okay. What's their defensive formation like? Uh, defense, they, we think they line up in a uh, split defense is what they've showed us. Uh, run a zone back behind it, but we're kind of expecting a uh, – couple variations probably so pretty multiple on defense okay as I mentioned before you know this being a special time for the kids homecoming it's a big deal for them how will you look to focus the kids going into the last non gesture game of the season uh, you know the big thing is this week we've talked about we want to get better and, and we want to peak this week and and be ready for our first district game against Lavernia uh, we're not overlooking Crystal City but this is the last chance you get before the for the real game right. start. The final uh, tune-up. Exactly. It's the final tune-up. And so uh, we're, we're not focusing so much about what Crystal City is going to do. It's more what are we going to do is what we're trying to focus on this week. Okay. Well, you know, another interesting week, Coach, uh, a win will give you exactly 100 as the Pleasanton High School coach. How does yeah. that sound to you? Uh, it sounds good. You know, like I told you the other day on the phone, uh, let's get that win, and then we'll talk about it. But <laughs> I'm not going to count my chickens uh, before they hatch. Um, if it happens, it'll be a special moment. Uh, if it doesn't happen, maybe we'll get it next week. But we'll talk more about that hopefully when it happens. <laughs> Great. Well, good luck on Friday, Coach. We stopped with Jurdington's Ian Hans after the Indians beat Brooks Academy. Here I have Ian Hines from the Jurgen Indian quarterback. What are your thoughts? I mean, everybody's just playing like 0-0 zero, zero right now, and I really like how our team's playing right now. They're looking great to start district. Sure, how did this work uh, this week's practice pay off against Brooks? I mean, it was great. Nobody took it too light, and second string for working the hardest. Because we know we were going to have the chance to play this game. But What is it taking to become now four in the season? Uh, it's a lot of focus, just not getting... No, I guess too hot-headed and about our record. Next, we look at the Indians' third straight home game with George West coming to town. Afterward, I sat down with Jurdenton head coach Wayne Johnson to talk about the team's current four-game winning streak. 
the Indians enter their third street game at home as they host District Foe George West Friday night. After Jordanton fell in its season opener, the Indians sparked a four-game winning streak. The Indians shut out San Antonio Brooks Academy 61 to nothing last week and look to continue their success against the Longhorns. George West dropped its district opener to Goliad 38 to 20 one week ago and is one and four overall in the season. Jordanton lost to the Longhorns 31 to 13 on the road last season. Here at Jurdenton High School with head coach Wayne Johnson. How are you doing today, coach? Good, Chris. Good to see you again. Good to see you, definitely. Well, you know, you started off district with a strong win. Now, how important is this game against uh, George West? Oh, that's very important because uh, this district is wide open, and they're one of the contenders for sure in the district. And you can, if you can win this ball game, it's going to help you uh, get in the mix. Uh, if you lose this ball game, it's going to hurt you. Because we got some really good teams coming up, also. So you know, it's it's a very important ball game for us. Now, what's their offensive formation, coach? Offensively, they run the the nasty slot, uh, which is everything is two tight ends all the time with the with the wing back on one side and then two backs in the backfield. They do a lot of uh, misdirection stuff, counters, reverses, and that kind of stuff. Okay. How do they line up defensively? Defensively, they're in a split defense, which is. Uh, we've seen it pretty much all year, forms of it, and but they use it, run it pretty basic, uh, but they're good at running it, so it'll be a challenge. Now you guys have won the last four games in a row. What's going to be that key ingredient to keep the winning streak alive? Well, you know, you can't have a letdown mentally. I think that's one of the big things we've been stressing with kids is you've got to keep mental sharpness all the time, practice uh, and in ball games, both. I mean, you got to have mental sharpness in practice so you get prepared, and we've been stressing that all week. Now, also talking about a four-game winning streak, how has the team reacted as far as earning the success? Oh, I, I think they're doing well with it. Um, you know, we're historically we don't win a lot of games in a row. That's just the way it's been. And but I think they're handling it very well. I, I'm I'm proud of the the way they're handling it. In fact, and they're they are working hard at at uh, in practice and stuff. So I, I think it's they're doing good. Great. Well, good luck on kickoff, coach. Thank you. Let's break down Poteet's last non-district opponent, S.A. Antonian. After that, Aggie head coach Hank Willis talks about the importance of playing a grueling non-district schedule. Poteet travels to San Antonio Friday to square off with a 3-1 Antonian Apaches. The Aggies were hampered by offensive penalties last week as they lost 41-14 to Pearsall at home. Poteet is going into its last non-district matchup with a 1-4 overall mark. Antonian is coming off a 48-26 road victory over Divine last week. The Aggies fell to Antonian last year 48-12. I'm here at Poteet High School with head coach Hank Willis. How are you doing today, coach? Good. Well, you know, this is the last non-district game of the season. You have a pretty tough opponent in Antonian. How do they line up offensively? Well... Those guys are going to be a power type football team, and they're going to run between the tackles. So we're going to have a work cut out for us this week. But uh, we've been working very hard, had a good uh, week of work this week, so we're going to get after them. Now, what have you been harping on the most in practice this week? Uh, correcting the small things. You know, we're going to pay a lot of attention to the details and just make sure, you know, we're not turning over the ball, make sure we're flying around on defense, make sure we're tackling, make sure we're doing the little things right. Now, like I said before, the last non-district game of the season, with a difficulty level as far as Antonian being the opponent, how will this prepare the team going into next week's game? Well, our uh, as everybody knows, our district is a very, very tough district. We've got a lot of good football teams from top to bottom, and it's going to be a dogfight to try to get in the playoffs. But uh, like I said, we want to to be the best. you got to beat the best, so we want to play the best, and that's what we're doing. Great. Well, good luck on Friday, Coach. Now let's hear what Charlotte sophomore Richard Blankenship had to say after the running back gamed over 200 yards in last week's win. I'm here with Richard Blankenship, running back of the Charlotte Trojans. So what are your thoughts on the game tonight? Well, we've been in the slump, and this is a big change for us. And it's going to change our, our hopes. And it's going to change all we thought about going into district and taking on the next opponent at a time. What does this win mean for you? It's a good feeling. It means we still have hope, and it's a positive attitude we're moving forward direction. So how do you feel after scoring four touchdowns tonight? Happy I, I did it for the team. It's a good thing. And it's just pushing us forward. Charlotte travels to face the fifth ranked state team in Class 1A Division 2 Fall City Friday night. Friday's matchup with Fall City is the last non-district game for Charlotte who is 2-3 overall. 
The Trojans' 30-12 victory over Ben Bolt last week snapped their three-game skid after opening the season with a win over San Marcos Baptist. Charlotte rushed for 251 yards against the Badgers, with Richard Blankenship paving the way with 203 yards, along with four touchdowns. Fall City remains undefeated at 5-0 after thumping three rivers 49-6 last week. Charlotte lost 40 to nothing to the Beavers last season. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter for the latest scores of your favorite area teams at PE1909. Join the conversation at hashtag MyBCSports. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Inside Brush Country Sports. I'd like to thank the Charlotte High School cheerleaders for their time. We also want to extend our gratitude to South Texas Orthopedics. Signing off, I'm Chris Filateo. Head out there and enjoy your Friday night lights.